to promote lawfulness, crime prevention and cybersecurity skills for students. The leading cybersecurity company in partnership with Africa Teen Gigs will host a three-day hackathon from July the 9th to the 11th at Cementex Mountain View Campus. Africa Teen Geeks is a South African non-profit organization that provides computer science training in schools and underserved communities. To tell us more about this, we're joined in the studio by IT specialist and Africa Teen Geeks board chair, Yashin Abed. Yashin, welcome uh, to the agenda and thank you so much for making the time. Thanks for inviting me. Yeah. What is a hackathon and who qualifies to participate? So generally a hackathon is a 36 hour plus event where a group of technologists come together trying to solve a problem. And the idea is that the teams have the opportunity to present a complete, completed solution within that time to the Dragon Den who are the judges to pick the best idea or uh, software program and the result is the winner actually gets comes away with the prize. Yep. What are the origins of Africa Teen Geeks? What, what created, what was the reason for them to, to come about? The primary reason is that within the South African context or the world's context, the jobs of today are migrating to primarily having a technology based to the jobs of tomorrow. And we find that uh, from an Africa Teen Geeks perspective that the 80% of have-nots in South Africa are just not well equipped coming into the tertiary situation with those critical skills. By that I mean that our com global competitors are coming into tertiary education industries with already a bare human right language, if I can call it that, of computer science. And they can actually utilize medicine, engineering, or even information technology to further advance their constructs and be very innovative in their views forward. Whereas in the South African context, a lot of kids enter the university stream if they get there at all, yeah. and they get there from, ba fr from the basics, which is basically puts them at a disadvantage. And our view and our vision is to migrate South Africa from a labor economy to that of an innovation economy. And that is where Africa Teen Geeks came to f came to the fold about three to four years ago with Lindiwe, and the primary vision is to say how is it that we earmark and gear these kids up to the world of tomorrow. Now, saying in introdu introdu introducing our conversation that your event promotes lawfulness, crime prevention, and cyber security skills, but we know that this weekend the country woke up to news of hackers using their skills mm -hmm. to illegally access a mm -hmm. private company's mm -hmm. uh, 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 system. How are you incorporating the conversation of how the provision of these skills mm -hmm. can cross the line and become illegal? Okay, so what we're doing is under the uh, global program of the United Nations Office of um, so Office on Drugs and Crime, this is, this is one of our partners in this entire initiative, and they're trying to entrench the values of l being legal and falling within lawfulness and this is where the hackathon that's being initiated by Symantec or sponsored by Symantec is actually going to look at gamification or introducing things like potential apps or whatever the kids come up with to say how is it that we can entrench those values utilizing platforms that kids are very familiar with. So utilizing that will look at changing a lot of the behavior of the kids. What has been the conversation at Symantec about what happened at Liberty? So we, we haven't quite had a discussion with Semantic specifically on Liberty, but primarily if you look at Liberty itself or any corporate for that matter, no one can get to the level of 100% secure. So the thing is that as you move progressively to 100% secure base, your costs go up exponentially to a state where it's unaffordable. And what you do is instead of just going to primarily a 100% secure base, companies build in resilience and they say okay I do know there are backdoors into the company how is it that I can mitigate the impact and the risk and manage it from that point onwards now where uh, Symantec comes in or partners with big corporates is a product that a lot of people know about is Norton antivirus and these are ways mechanism on traditional operating systems or software packages that they constantly plug and adapt or patch to actually prevent entrance into this. 
But you, the one of the biggest problems you have are, is the human resource element. So you can potentially block very well as Liberty does. I mean, you, to get into the Liberty system is virtually impossible from the outside. But it's very easy to get an email with an attachment that has malware attached to it. And it could have something as simple as we are offering you this refund. And you open this email and it will then permeate itself internally to yeah. the organization to identify hacks and try to get that in. So, so we companies like Liberty and the like have compliance initiatives where kids, where all their staff will go through and say, make sure, you know, from a security perspective, you don't open these emails, you don't do this. But again, human behavior is something that is flawed. You know, I'm so happy you're talking about that because corporates go to, to lengths mm -hmm. to try and warn employees about these emails. Mm -hmm. Are they really that dangerous? They are. There are so many ways. It is, it is, it's, there are so many ways for them to actually hack into your system. There's malicious intent of a staff. So you have some staff members that are disgruntled or vendors that come in and they potentially have disgruntled vendor employees and they can actually attach something to your hardware. They can deploy programs depending on the items. And that's one way for them to get into your uh, environment. Another way is an innocent individual yeah. opening up attachment because they feel this is actually not malicious and they won't even know that this has permeated other emails throughout the organization picking it up. Now most organizations can pick these things up. Other scenarios is where they actually lie dormant yeah. for the right time in the right situation for them to actually make themselves weak. And they test your, test your switches, your routers, all points that people don't normally actually test and they constantly find ways in and out of your system. So moving away from the illegal aspects mm -hmm. of this process, what are some of the exciting things that can come out of um, young people learning about cybersecurity? So I think one of the things is there's a, there's a massive career path as well. Other than just complying or blocking, there's a role called penetration testing. And this is where kids learn to actually hack. They, you come in and you try to hack your own company, trying to find flaws to actually trying to to prevent these things. The other thing is, if you look at security itself, security and different ways to block it, innovation, coming up with your own product, your own solution, yeah. you create a potential global product that someone like Symantec or other companies might buy, or you can actually just distribute out, th out there. Now that allows you to innovate and grow your, 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 your entrepreneur skills tremendously. And not just from that. We're also trying to look at it completely across all innovation to move us right. So Yashin, just to wrap it up, um, how should people interact with either uh, Symantec or Africa Teen Geeks if they want to take part in this event? Okay, so what happened is this event was the culmination of initiations between initiatives, sorry, between Indonesia, Bolivia and South Africa where the finalists of each country are now invited already so to the So it's a global event? It's a global event, yeah. that's right. And this is actually part of the Doha Declaration that came out of the United Nations uh, uh, c Committee for Crime Prevention and Criminal Justice. So this is a global program under that, and we basically now have to execute on this initiative through um, what's called Education for Justice. And under that program itself, we're focusing primarily on looking at how do we disseminate content. Quickly, any website details? There are, so there's African, Africa teengeeks.co.za. Symantec is a global organization itself, and the UN, you'll find it under the UN umbrella. Fantastic. Thank you so much. Yashin Abbott is a, a, a chair of the board of Africa Teen Geeks. Blade, what have you got? Well,